Welcome to my Guardian Tales top five DPS guides for beginners. Now this is gonna focus on three things. Their usability for a new player, their actual damage, and three, their versatility. If we don't cover those things, it's gonna be really difficult to make a proper DPS tier list. Once again, do keep in mind, this is for new and mid game players. End game, you're gonna be focusing on either raid or arena. And at that point, you know what to go for, right? So yeah, hope you'll enjoy this one. And if you do subscribe, now let's get straight to it. First up, no surprise. This is this should be no surprise to anyone. It's Claude. It's Claude. I know. His party buff is range damage 50%. His normal attack shreds enemy dark type resistance by 20%. In addition to his chain skill increasing all allies dark type attack by 20%. In addition to his party, his special ability increasing his damage dealt by 25% when his HP is above 50%. And becoming tankier by 25% when his HP is below 50%. Just that kit alone is ridiculous. It's so much additional damage for him, his party, and so much extra survivability for him in case he falls below a certain threshold he however does need his exclusive weapons now the tier list is going to be based off of the fact that you have exclusive weapons as their dps's they're not you know supports or healers or tanks who might not need them they need them they're dps's okay so you're going to want their ex's pretty much no matter what his ex weapon is quite important as on crimson fest hit and deal additional 50 percent dps damage once every two seconds now crimson fest is his normal attack so it's going to be quite a bit of additional damage every now and then. Restores Claude's HP by 50% of the damage dealt. Lowers attack of enemies hit by additional damage by 10% for 20 for two seconds. So this is quite a lot of additional damage, quite a lot of additional sustain, and it's quite a, it's not quite a bit. It's a fair bit of additional safety for the team. Great kit. His kit is absurd. His exclusive weapon has a full screen wide AOE. It means you're going to be doing an absurd amount of damage, healing for quite a fair quite a fair amount. Your party is going to be doing quite a lot more damage. It's an absurd kit over around, overall around. Super versatile, even though he does primarily buff darks. He's so so damn good, pretty much in any content. He may, he's a bit weaker in stuff like arena. But outside of that, he's an absolute freaking monster. He rails through everything. Now, second place is gonna be a bit more controversial here because Kalmai L and Yunha are definitely deserving of this. They definitely share this spot, but I'm actually gonna say Beth for second place. The reason is she does so much for a new player, even though melees are, you know, quite a, melees in general, let me say that specifically melees in general are a lot weaker than ranged characters in general okay that is due to the major lack of support they have and all the broken not broken all the very strong characters in ranged archetype however beth is a major outlier if beth was a ranged character she would be so broken okay she would actually be broken However, her party buffs a 50% melee damage boost, so yeah, you really just want to run her with me melee characters. Her normal attack is just, you know, basic 200 shenanigans. Her chain skill is 400% of range damage and increases her melee attack by 40% for 8 seconds, so it's a pretty strong damage buff for herself. Her special ability is where it just gets insane. Depending on the number of enemies within 3 tiles, attack increases by 20% up to 60%, and negates incoming damage by 20% up to 60 percent so at the bare minimum her special ability will grant you 20 percent attack and 20 percent damage reduction which is ridiculous it's an absurd amount of power that shouldn't be on a character i i'm joking it, it's it's really good it's so powerful and in story, it's where it shines the most. Story, Camazon, uh, Coliseum, stuff like that. Content where there are multiple enemies, it just shreds through them. She can, she becomes so tanky once you get her EX. On Dark Smash's hit, which is her normal attack, decreases Dark Type resistance by 20% for 3 seconds and generates a shield by 10% of the inflicted damage upon enemies. And this is just super powerful because you're getting so much additional tankiness off of this, especially because you're a melee unit. You need it. You can't sit in the back and snipe away like someone like MK99 can. You're fighting. You're going to be taking a lot of hits. This makes her a lot tankier and boosts her damage and other dark type melees on the team. She works her strongest synergy is with Demon Queen Lilith, which is really cool, but super strong kit does a lot of damage. However, she isn't 
super synergetic with some of the best characters in the game, like Claude, Yuna, Kamael. Once again, do realize that Guardian Tales isn't a matter run game. There are stronger characters and there are weaker characters. However, you can clear most content with pretty much anything as long as it's, you know, it's reasonable, okay? Don't ram your head into content using all oh, one-star characters and then complain and say that, oh, I told you this advice. No, be reasonable, okay? Her kit, solid 10 out of 10. I mean, she's providing so much value for you as a beginner. She can clear through so many contents with even a scuffed team, really. As long as you have a highly invested Beth, a lot of your team can just be healer, tank, tank, and you'll be perfectly fine. I think some of the best teams for story with her is Future Princess, Beth, Maya, or Future Princess, Beth, Maya, Craig. You can even do Craig, Beth, Maya. Beth and Maya go hand in hand just simply because my generic healer, so she works really well. And Beth with healing is unbelievably tanky in content, instant-based content where there are multiple enemies because you have constant up uptime on shield, constant damage reduction, constant defense shred on enemies, constant major AOE hits. Because remember, you have a great sword, so your attack range is a lot larger than, you know, for example, a smaller sword user. But yeah. Great investment for a character, however, it is possible for you to argue that Kamael or Yunha made me deserve the spot. Next up is Yunha, and to the surprise of no one, I think she's better. Okay, she's as good as Kamael, if not slightly better, because their kits are just mirror copies of each other. Just Yunha is weaker in PvP. Yunha is much, much weaker than Kamael in PvP. While Kamael with, you know, Mono Earth is really damn good in PvP, whether it's, you know, Coliseum or Arena, Yunha is significantly weaker in that regard, if not just incomparable. However, her party buff is ranged damage once again. As I've said, she works really well with other ranged characters. Her normal attack just does basic range damage, but if it sits six times, similar to Kamael's uh, normal attack, it will heal the whole party. Mask Mastery is her second ability, which on hit just reduces attack by 10%. It's a little nice safety net, but do realize I think it overrides some marks, like uh, First Corpse Commanders. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think it does, because it is considered a mark. So be careful with that synergy. So yeah, she gets quite a bit of healing from her normal attack because her normal attack attacks are endless, meaning unlike Claude or Kamal who have a charge bar or Future Knight who have a charge bar, her attacks just go, right? They just constantly go. Her chain skill is shape shifts into an object to inflict 500% of DPS as melee damage, which is a really high multiplier, right? Most chain skills are around, you know, 200 to 400% with 400% being the higher end. 500% is pretty damn high. Her special ability is really, really good. On Gloomy Hill's hit, reduces the enemy def enemy's defense by 20%. This means she can actually work with Kamael as Kamel reduces range defense and she reduces generic defense, which means they actually work synergetically and don't exceed others. For example, if you were to use Nari instead of her with Kamai L, her, it just wouldn't do anything. It would just be a 20% range defense reduction because those don't stack. On Gloomy Gills, it increases party members attack by 2% for 3 seconds. This effect overlaps up to 10 times. Once again, Gloomy Gills is her normal attack, so you're going to be able to get these and procking them constantly really fast because her attacks don't have a charge bar. So overall, her kit, she provides quite a bit of nice healing with her normal attack. She provides 20% uh, enemy defense shred. She provides 20% attack buff for the whole party. And yeah, 10% attack reduction for enemies, 50% range damage with the party buff. This is, that's without her weapon, right? If the duration of gloomy, gloomy gales is maintained for three seconds, increase crit hit multiplier of basic temp heroes by 50% for five seconds. This effect applies once every three seconds. Now, this is primarily, primarily for basic teams. It's what makes the basic raid team actually so good because it just boosts the whole party's damage by just so much. Damage dealt to for Dokebe Mischief increases by 50% of skill damage and it increases up to 100%. Now, yeah, that is pretty much just her normal attacks and stuff. It increases her damage by quite a bit. So yes, if you're gonna run her, you need the EX. However, unlike Claude or Kamai L, you can get away with not having it for a bit. However, like I've said for DPSs, you absolutely want their exclusive weapons. Now, I'm going to actually just put Kamael in the same slot here. 
Kama L and Yunha both equally deserve to be here, okay? I'm not gonna put them separately because they're pretty much the same character. Kama L being better in some aspects with Yunha being more useful in some aspects. For example, Kama L in PvP and Earth teams, Yunha in um, basic teams, stuff like that. They're, they're, they're the same unit, okay? Even the dev developers have said so that uh, the current developer head team created Yunai and Kamael's image, so just keep that in mind. Fourth place is gonna be Mariel. Mariel is super, super good. Her party buff is a 40% crit chance buff. Her normal attack is really nice. It does have a charge bar, so do keep that in mind. It's different. Shoots a ray that inflicts 400% of DPS damage to enemies on its way. Now her chain skill absolutely hurts, okay? If there are earth type heroes in the party, excluding herself, increase the damage by 30%. So yes, she is not as splashable as someone like Yunha, but her damage is really good. She works super well with her teams and one of the best characters in the game, Kamai L. Once again, Guardian Tales is not matter on, so for those of you that are gonna comment, I'm saying these things to make it easier for a new player, like anyone else that may be watching to understand. An exclusive weapon is needed though, because on crit hit, which she's gonna be critting a lot, if, especially if you have sharpshooter on her, in addition to her party buff, Increases movement speed by 5% and reduces enemy earth resistance by 5%. This stacks up to four times. So she provides a 40% crit chance party buff, increases her damage by 30% if there's an earth unit, increases her movement speed by 20% and reduces enemy earth resistance by 20%. This is all in addition to having really good attack stats, really, really good DPS. She's such a significant part of the Earth Ray team. She's phenomenal in PvP. She's a great dogfighter. She does really well in story. Kiting with her is actually a lot easier in dodging skull shots because of the amount of movement speed she has and how her kit works. Fifth place might be surprising to some people, but I'm, I'm picking Future Knight for fifth place because she's a jack of all trades, master of none. She's really versatile. However, she's not as good as, for example, if Kamael, Yunha, and Claude are great at everything they do, Future Knight is ranging from being okay at everything she does to being good at something she does, right? She's just a weaker Kama or Yunha while not providing as much because her party buffs aren't as good as theirs. For example, weapon skill regen 30% speed um, and skill damage 30%, they're weaker buffs than just range damage boosts. And the reason is because these are only benefiting one character and that's your lead, okay? While a 30% weapon skill regen speed is really nice and 30% skill damage is pretty nice, it's only affecting your lead because that's the only character that can use their weapon skill. So you're not getting as much out of it as you think you are. Her master weapons passive gets so much to our, you know, favorite knights, dumb faces uh, passive. Nothing special, she can pretty much use any weapon. Her special ability is rifle normal attack penetrates the enemy and inflicts 50% more damage by 50% chance. On hit reduces basic attack resistance by 20% for 3 seconds, which is really nice. It's not as great as, for example, someone like Mayor Reels, because this is RNG based, while Mayor Reels is not, or Claude's, where it's just a really strong passive. Hers is more RNG based, however, the 50, however, the 20, mind me, uh, percent basic type shred is really nice. This is primarily due to her propelling basics due to Yunha. Now, Yunha and Future Knight are actually a great combo for story and just general content. However, she isn't as good as she used to be, okay? In PvP, there's melee teams with Chainsaw, and I'm not gonna cover it in this video because that's a purely a PvP thing. Uh, Machine Gun Future Knight is the PvE build. And she does need her uh, EX because it does increase her magazine size and things. Uh, on hit, Magiton energy explodes by 30% chance to inflict 50% of DPS and reduces the target's weapon skill regen speed by 30% for 2 seconds. Now, Magiton energy is just... <laughs> right? You need her weapon once again as it's a DPS, so... You can't bother, you know, to go lazy on it or skip out on it. You need it and you can't avoid it. This is a pretty controversial opinion on Future Knight in this stage because it's not really a lot of people are going to say she's a great character. She's good. She's good. Okay. No one's not going to say that she's not good, but fifth place, I'm picking something that's more so generic than a lot of other characters. And now I'm going to leave some of my thoughts down here, right? I'm just going to go through and give you my opinions on different characters as DPSs, okay? Tinyet, only useful in Earth Raids. 
Aleph isn't a DPS, he's absolute shit. Pardon my language, but characters shouldn't exist in the game. Garen isn't a bad DPS, actually, he's just locked into mono water. Uh, Rue, once again, not a bad DPS, pretty good actually, but she's locked, hardcore locked into mono earth. She's just off brand Mayreal for PvE. PvP, Rue is really good, for example, Arena or Kala, but Mayreal is just infinitely better, Rue generally. Uh, Gabriel isn't really a DPS, she's just a great offensive buffer that can do some damage. Not really her forte for DPS. MK99 is a great DPS, actually. She is arguably better than Future Knight, it's just... I personally find more value in Future Knight due to Yinha. However, if you get uh, MK99, nothing wrong with her. She's really, really good in PvE. She's recently been falling off in PvP, I think. But you don't need to worry about that as a new player. And if you want, you can put MK99 fifth place. It really doesn't matter. The first three to four slots are primarily what are just, just the top tiers in terms of DPS. Fifth place is really, really, I think, opinion-based. Lilith, once again, isn't bad, but she really is only worth using if you're running her with Beth, in my opinion. Eleanor is a monolight hardcore support. Erna is a purely PvP unit. Kamael, I've already put in the tier list place. Hana is only usable in PvP, really. Priscilla isn't a DPS that's very strong. In DPS, she's primarily just a supportive shielder that can do damage. Miss Chrome isn't a bad DPS, she's pretty decent, she's out on a banner right now, but she's mainly an endgame expeditions unit, she doesn't provide much value for a new player. Mad Panda Trio doesn't do anything PvE wise, really fun PvP character though, really fun. Andras is where I think a lot of people are going to find problems that she's not on this list. And the reason is, she doesn't provide anything to a new player, she's just DPS Machine 101, right? That's all she does, is just DPS. She doesn't provide anything outside of that. And well, yeah, she has a range damage party buff and stuff, and she does shred defense. Outside of that, she's not really, you know, doing too much. And she's really squishy, and you really can't go with a character like that when you're new because you're gonna mess up and you don't get much value out of it. It's difficult to use, clunky, and doesn't translate to other content outside of just pure damage-based contents very well. Chunryo and TR Monk, you can use them in a light raids and outside of that doesn't do anything hero sky isn't bad has pvp usage on melee raid usages again nothing crazy first group's commander is more support than dps but her dps isn't bad however once again she's more so a sub dps amaris is primarily for raids however her dps isn't bad but she is also locked into mono earth so do be wary of that uh current shapira is locked into melee right melee light raids so you can't really get much versatility out of her. Amy is just, hey, Amy, I don't know what that unit does. I, I, I did not bother with looking at that unit whatsoever, so who knows. And yeah, Mail Knight with Libera Type B is a pure uh, rage, rage unit with the basic team. But once again, he's okay in PvE if you don't have anything else, but not really that great. Ascended Karina is really strong DPS wise because she heals a lot. However, I'm, I didn't put her here because she's in my healers list. And like I've said before, don't go for Ascended Heroes as a new player. Get two max limit broken unique heroes first. But yeah, that will be it. There's not really any other crazy rare hero DPSs. Elvira, I guess, Ascended Elvira isn't bad, but once again, not really that great. Fire rates aren't really one of the best teams, so that'll be it. Oh, I forgot Rosetta. Rosetta's not bad, but I think if you're going to be running any Earth character, you have much better options anyways. She's not bad, though. She's good. She's good. Don't get me wrong. But yeah, that will be it, and I hope it helped you, and if it did, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and be sure to support the channel. Join the, join the community Discord, and I'll see you all there. Hope you all enjoyed.